the Cape Charles Town Council regular meeting for April 16th to order. Have a roll call, please. Brian Cutter. Brandon Preston. Nick Hallinger. Let the record show we have a quorum. Let's stand for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, before we start, uh, I'd like to ensure you all know Mr. Brent Manuel, our new town manager. Brent, stand up. Comes to us. Great resume and recommendations. And uh, we welcome him to Cape Charles. If you see him in town, uh, welcome him and be sure to ask him an embarrassing question. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Brent. Welcome. Welcome to Cape Charles. Uh, I'm going to start uh, with the, the recognition of visitors and a proclamation relative to National Safe Boating Week. Americans increasingly head to the water for recreation and relaxation. It is vital that all boaters practice safe boating habits, especially wearing life jackets. Approximately 88% of those who drown in boating-related accidents were not wearing life jackets. May 16th to 22nd of 2015 is National Safe Boating Week. In an effort to promote National Safe Boating Week, U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary Flotilla 12-2 paper requests that the town of Cape Charles adopt a proclamation naming May 16th through 22nd as Safe Boating Week within the town of Cape Charles. The staff has recommended that uh, uh, council approve proclaiming the week of May 16th through the 22nd, 2015 as National Safe Boating Week. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It is passed, and I would like to read the proclamation. Whereas recreational boating is fun and enjoyable, and we are fortunate that we have sufficient resources to accommodate the wide variety of pleasure boating demands. However, all our waterways are, can become crowded at times and be a place of chaos and confusion. While being a marvelous source of recreation, Boating to the unprepared can be a risky sport. Not knowing or obeying the navigation or the rules of the nautical rules of the road, drinking alcohol or taking drugs while operating a boat, or choosing not to wear your life jacket when doing so is clearly not the smart thing to do. They are all examples of human error or a lack of proper judgment. One particular behavior that can reduce the number of boaters who lose their lives by drowning each year by approximately 80% is the wearing of a life jacket. It is a simple task that has the potential to reduce terrible loss in lives. Whereas on average, 800 people die each year in boating related accidents in the US, nearly 70% of these fatalities are caused by drowning. And whereas the vast majority of these accidents are caused by human error or poor judgment, and not by the boat, equipment, or environmental factors, and whereas a significant number of boaters who lose their lives by drowning each year would be alive today had they worn their jackets, and whereas modern life jackets are more comfortable, more attractive, and more wearable than styles of years past, and deserve a fresh look by today's boating public, and whereas U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary Flotilla 12-2 Painter <coughs> provides safe boating instruction for persons of all ages in order to prevent boating accidents and to teach rescue and survival techniques in case one does occur. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Town Council of Cape Charles supports the goals of the North American Safe Boating Campaign and hereby proclaims May 16th through 22nd, 2015 as National Safe Boating Week and the start of the year-round effort to promote safe boating and encourages all boaters to wear their life jackets, vote responsibly, or enroll in a safe boating class. In witness thereof, the Town Council of Cape Charles urges all those who vote to vote smart, vote safe, wear it, and practice safe voting habits. This is adopted by the Town Council of Cape Charles on April 16, 2015. So, this proclamation, you know, I think is very 
much for all the Coast Guard does. <laughs> well, last time I was cut out of the picture, so this time I'm getting out of I didn't crop you out of it. I know, I know you did. <laughs> Business would be public comment. Are there any public comments? Uh, yes. Uh, Phil, is it Getkin. Getkin. Hmm. Hello. Uh, my name is Phil Getkin. Uh, I'm bringing my wife, Diane, beside me. Uh, we apologize for coming dirty. We just came from the New Roots Garden. We're working there for a couple hours and it's okay if I have my clippers on. Uh, at any rate, uh, we're here to briefly talk about the sidewalks. We talked to Mr. Prote uh, yesterday, and he is talking about it and discussing it with uh, some of the town staff. We talked to Jim Brady before about Bob Banning. We've talked briefly about the sidewalks. At any rate, we're building a house uh, over on Nectarine and Jefferson. And it's coming along really well, and we're currently homeless, and we can't wait to get into that home. Our new home, uh, we're excited about uh, again, I'm uh, excited about being here in Cape Charles. And so uh, the fact that we are building a house, something that has come up recently is the subject of sidewalks. Whether or not uh, we need to put the sidewalks in or we don't. Uh, so the town has, a, as far as I can tell, has a, a goal of being a walkable town, which I think is admirable, and we're 100% behind it. Uh, right now, Obviously, the town is not 100% walkable with 100% viable sidewalks. Uh, we've reviewed the town code on sidewalks. Uh, we've, we've got some time on our hands since we're retired, and so we're looking at things. And I'm sure you all know uh, section 62.4 in the town code, but it talks about construction and maintenance of sidewalks. And the town council, it says, may require and compel the owner of property within the town to construct and maintain sidewalks abutting on the property of such owner along existing streets. Uh, to me, that seemed like a really wide open statement, and that's all it really says other than the enforcement aspect of it. Uh, I mean, if the ordinance can be and probably has been uh, probably inconsistently and subjectively enforced and applied. I'm going to be negative just for a minute here. I have three minutes, so my last minute, I promise to be very positive, but I just want to kind of uh, explain what I feel and the way it appears to me to be the case. Also, based on that statement, uh, there's really no difference between existing, new, or future owners of property. It doesn't distinguish whether the property is improved or not improved. It doesn't distinguish between whether the land is vacant, whether it's restored property and restored, whether it's condemned, or whether it's new construction. Uh, so we have uh, also gone around to the town studying uh, the, the sidewalks, and needless to say, there's a lot of improvements are necessary. Uh, <coughs> funding them is a whole other thing. But you know, we've looked at a lot of. We started with major streets like Mason, Fig, Strawberry, Washington, and a lot of the streets may have sidewalks on one side, maybe not on the other. It may not be continuous. There may be landscaping in the way. There may be some sort of structure in the way. But there's no continuous sidewalk on almost any of the streets in town. Uh, and the further you get away from Mason, uh, the less continuous the sidewalks tend to be. At least that's what it appears to me. I mean, there's, in addition, there's no sidewalks on the north side of the high, high school. There's no sidewalks next to the tennis courts. There's no sidewalks on the west side of the Central Park. You have about a minute. OK. So what I am uh, going to recommend is that the town study this can be a panel or a commission or a study group or whatever you want to call it with the goals of really developing a detailed strategy and plan uh, for improving and maintaining our sidewalks. Uh, it's really kind of a hodgepodge right now and if we continue to operate the way we are right now and I sort of assume 
that based on what I've heard is that really only new construction is the only place where a new sidewalks have been constructed. Uh, properties uh, where sidewalks have been improved, but not new sidewalks. Uh, uh, so, uh, convene a panel with the goals of developing an overall strategy and improving sidewalks. Improving and including sustainability and water management, since we're talking about a per impervious uh, source here. Uh, also, developing options for funding and financing the plan. And Diane has three more minutes. Is that okay? Finish this. Okay, so we're talking finance now. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is uh, v VDOT. With the book for money from VDOT. We, um, at this point on our house, it's on a corner, and we would have to put sidewalk on the front and on the side. We, we want to put sidewalk along the front, but to put it along nectarine to us makes no sense. We would rather than put sidewalk on nectarine that really goes nowhere. We would rather give money to a fund that would establish a help us to put sidewalks in places where it would make a difference. Maybe where we could connect two sidewalks that are closer that would make a longer expanse of sidewalk. Um, in addition, we are volunteering to head that committee to look into sidewalks and perhaps look into funding, working of course with town staff and council. So we're asking two things. One is to get a panel together, a group together to study the situation and figure out how to put it in place and how to fund it. And the second one is, uh, we don't want to put sidewalk on nectarine. We would rather give you money than put sidewalk there and have it be meaningless. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any other public comments? Signed up. Uh, the section public comments is closed. Uh, I'd like a motion to approve the agenda format. So Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The agenda format is approved. I'd like a motion to approve the minutes from the previous meeting. So Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The minutes from the previous meeting are approved. Uh, let us go to the Treasurer's report.
2,913 was for the multi-use trail project, 8,659 was for the new well, 3,621 was for the new phone system, and 6,244 was for pump station uh, redesign. Today we're at 8% of capital budget. And I also updated the um, status or start date for the second column from the left. This is something you can push back and a few big completed since we last met. There's four shows um, tax collection statistics. So, as of March 31st, we're at 93% of budgeted real estate tax revenue. <coughs> For personal property license, machinery, and tools taxes, we collected 79% of budget. And I'd like to mention that we finally got everything we need to do the DMV stops. We just got the last piece today, and we do a training next week. Also, uh, we put it in the Gazette and just get the word out that people should call in and check and make sure they have it inadvertently and like to pay one of those years. Give them a chance before we mess up their DMV. Um, for prior year, all property taxes, interest, and penalty collections were at 104% of budget. And then, um, page five is our revenue comparison. The trends, most categories are following the trends in prior months, nothing new to report there. And then I've also included a page six this month, just um, I know there's been some interest in expressing knowing exactly how much debt the town has. So that chart will show uh, the progress the town is making in paying off long-term debt. I won't provide it each month because the payments are spread throughout the year kind of sporadically, but I'll, I'll, I'll keep it updated once or twice a year or as requested. The first table shows the total original debt on that column, and then it's divided by funds to the right. The second table shows how much debt has been paid to date, and that includes the 2010 payment that's due in April. We made that this week, so I included that. The last table shows the remaining debt due. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions about that one? The ship isn't sinking. The ship is not sinking. We're eating away at it at a very nice pace. And if you look at your previous chart, it looks like we're either even, about even, or ahead in most categories. Mm -hmm. Not all, but most. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, uh, you think the room tax, the food tax were down during February, January, January, February, February and March mostly? Right, but they were each year. So. Yeah. And our, our rate is a little higher. We definitely got only a few submissions. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right, any questions? I have a motion to approve the treasurer's report as submitted. Second. All in favor? Aye. Right. Treasurer's report is accepted. Planning Commission. Good evening. We've got my report. I'm going to visit your take a public record and audience. We had four in the month of March. We had four zone assurances approved. Uh, the projects are listed. Uh, the planning commission met on April 7th and joined the special meeting with the town council as we discussed the comprehensive plan. Uh, I believe we're awaiting comments from the council at this point. Uh, during the council, <coughs> during the planning commission uh, regular meeting, um, they discussed the community tourism zone and came to some initial consensus. The items that are listed as the first thing that's for credits that describe the incentive program and does return. They also determined that the entire town is an appropriate footprint for the proposed zone. Uh, also, for purposes of this ordinance, a full time employee he is defined according to that federal statute there, which is from the tax code. And that's the tax code uh, relative to a definition of a full time employee uh, as it pertains to the affordable care, <coughs> say 30 hours a week. And uh, they also looked at the words, adding the words fishing, communication, and transportation to be included qualified businesses. <coughs> uh, staff, next to staff also delivered the annual planning commission report. Um, we've got a copy of that one. We've seen that, I guess, later on. 
Um, the discussion of satellite dish ordinance was postponed for another meeting. That's the planning commission regular meeting following the joint work session with town council. Historic dish, any questions about the planning commission? Historic dish review board met on the 17th and 24th of March. On the 17th was to entertain two applications for um, certificates of appropriateness in the historic district. Both of those properties were approved. They also met on the 21st to um, do some administrative business, so mostly to review the historic district guidelines, which is ongoing for the historic district review board, and also to discuss fees. Uh, and I'll give an informational report from staff on the fees uh, that were discussed uh, later this evening. I'm also working on a grant um, to May 15th to provide training for the uh, Historic District Review Board, as well as any other interested um, residents of the state of Maryland who would like to know about historic preservation of properties. Uh, there's no town match required for that grant. Training grant. Uh, state of Virginia. Yes. I'm sorry about that. I didn't say the wrong thing. <laughs> but at least, at least we knew all this kind of thing. Thank you for that. I knew the uh, But the EZA did not meet. They don't have any business. Um, upcoming on Monday the 20th, Harvard uh, Area Review Board is meeting and contains two applications, both for uh, Mason Avenue development projects. One at 300, all known as Strawberry Station. Uh, we've got enough to move the applicant to the uh, situation of the general application. The other one is for the hotel, one Mason Avenue, where substantial work has been done. So the, both those applicants will be in front of the Harbor Area Review Board on Monday night. The Historic District Review Board meets in every meeting on Tuesday. They're entertaining three applications, um, as well as having a discussion about the satellite dish ordinance as it pertains to the Historic District. And if time permits, also entertaining color palettes and recording painting within the historic district. Again, that's part of the ongoing review <coughs> of the historic district guidelines. Have you any questions? Questions, anyone? Thank you very much. Uh, we could, of course, go next. Uh, I don't have anything to add unless council has any questions for me. You're a busy guy. Very. Gonna get busier. So, total construction so far this year, $5.4 million. Right. That's physical year. So that's from July to the Yep. So, all sorts of fees being collected. $160,000 in permit fees. This is all good news. Yeah, um, I'll be permitting probably six new homes within the next uh, three weeks. Super. Not counting the strawberry station and the one that's now in project. And you also do other things like fire inspections or something. That's right. Is there anything we should know that is going to, it's coming up that we should be prepared for? I mean, every, all this looks really good to me. Um, not that I can think of. Okay. Um, you know, um, things could arise, you know, with projects like, you know, where anything <laughs> issues with, with the strawberry tree <laughs> which, you know, that's, you know, you've been aware of, but, um. I'm curious to know how the minor issue of schools come Uh, fabulous. Uh, I believe Bob took, uh, took him in there last week. Um, they are in turnout stage. Um, they're getting power cut on to his hand and get down here. Um, the site work has begun, you know, site work uh, to put the parking lot in. Um, June is what we're hearing for full completion. Let me call you off for uh, I did. Um, and and it, um, yeah, if um, so council you. wants to let me know the best date, I'm available Monday through Friday. So. Um, we, possibly we can coordinate so we don't have to get this multiple times. Yeah, so I'd um, like to go myself. I maybe I'll have Libby send you all, pull you on an email or something. Okay. Have Libby pull you on an email. <coughs> we've got one guy here who works. You want to go take a look at that? It's no. Okay. Not that I don't want to see it, but I don't want you to schedule it around me. Well, we could maybe do it in the evening. 
You can do it in the evening if you want, if you so choose, Steve. I mean, yeah, that's fine. I, I, I know, right. actually, my wife, Nan, was just walking by and started talking to the guy and invited her in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you so you heard, you heard all the details. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll have, so we'll have Lucas and Nan email and poll you guys. So and then the best availability is, and uh, I'll just contact the uh, the owner and make sure it's okay. I'm sure it's fine. Great. Any, any other questions? Your tap fees, $98,000 in tap fees. Let's look at the year prior. 37000 for all the last mm -hmm. year. Triple. We still have it. Three, two months. Now, Cape Charles Lofts, if they come in before July, which they have to pay the connections at CO, that's 50000 And then six houses, they're all more than one bedroom, so that's 350000 each, so that's over 100000 Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Good. Okay, thank right. you very much. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I think it's fine. It's the harbor. It's really, it's all me. 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 Some significant steps to make sure this doesn't happen again. You want to sort of outline it for the 
Well, one of the things we, we discussed on the council of the main thing is uh, not to take the hotel approach to tie up and the uh, we, we handle a lot of activity uh, during, on a weekly basis, especially in the spring year with crackers and stuff in. Uh, so a lot of them, they come in and pay at the end of the week. Uh, that's fine, but we're still required to have a call in case they don't pay. Uh, the, uh, that, that's just one of the things that, that we do. We can do this been done since I've been here. Uh, we can stop it and we need more people to stop uh, from doing that because it's a lot of transactions going on in a short period of time. Uh, I, think, uh, I think for the most part, as I have mind, we have a lot of customers. The most of them. Uh, I know all of them. I think we can get our hands on the five that we have on. We can get our hands on at least two or three of those. Uh, there's ways around it, but just the other in the area, we just can get our hands on it. You know, so <laughs> uh, I'll make steps for me to do that as well. Okay. Uh, all right. Thank you. Uh, let's see what we got next here. Uh, library. to uh, let everyone know that uh, we now have a baby changing station at the library for those of you that have babies. <laughs> Thanks to the friends of the library and also the library has been cleaned top to bottom. Thanks to the friends of the library. And so we're looking good. We're gearing up for the summer. We're going to have a great summer. And in May we're going to have a really neat program and share with this wonderful choir. Uh, May 18th, um, Jeff Holland from the Chesapeake Bakerage Tunnel will be doing a talk at the library all about the, the, the Bakerage Tunnel. So we hope you can all attend that. Questions? Questions, anyone? Cleaning materials at the library was a discussion of a budget meeting the other night. The what? Cleaning materials at the library was a topic of discussion last time. Uh, they said take your credit card and go to Watson's and buy the equipment. Oh yes, we're also the work was started on Tuesday upstairs with the air and heat, so they're working on that. So hopefully we will have the air and heat. Which is the office up there, which we've never really done, and our meeting room will really be comfortable in both warm and cold weather. Can we look out of the control? Yes, and I mean, I mean, I think they're aiming for the end of the week to be finished. So it's coming along great. And the lights that are on outside the library. Pete is working on that. I, yeah, I mentioned it too. I did. Yeah. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, police department chief. commenting on the body cam, the yeah. body cam, you want to turn around and just show everybody so they can... Yeah, on the road, right in front of the stop sign uh, yesterday on the way home. 
It's like, I don't know what he was thinking. But, uh, My whole life has been fun. It's gotten a lot better than pull back in. Yeah. Uh, unless anybody has any questions, Steve. Same question. Yeah. Million million gallons difference. Some of it is, well, that, I think that's going to be like normal operating. Percent. Well, I can't believe that, Dave, because last month it was working. because of all of the, the leaks because of the cold weather, but right. you know, it hadn't been that wet this month and it hasn't been that cold this month. You know, every month it's a million or a million and a half, and I just think there's something wrong. And it's, either, well, we're and it's right more than I and I. It's either your record keeping is, is incorrect or something's. Something's going on. I mean, well, I think it's a, I, I think it's an I and I. I, don't, I don't, unless, like I said, you know, I, I, and I, could you clarify what that means for uh, inflow and infiltration from okay. groundwater, uh, stormwater coming into the system? Um, that's certainly that's certainly part of it. I mean, we know that we're aware of that. And when these instruments get calibrated, they'll get calibrated sometime this year. When they do, maybe we'll find out that uh, one of them's off. But I well, suspect it's the the issue of the. Uh, uh, groundwater and rainwater getting into the system. Given, we're on. given that this has come up a number of times and we still have some concerns about it, can we go off and have a plan to find out exactly what the source of the difference is? Is there a way we can do What do you think, Steve? I don't, I don't think we can. You don't think we can? Why not? Well, I don't think we can because he hasn't. <laughs> I mean, if well, it's something easy to find, he would have done it by now. And when the uh, manholes are fixed, maybe you'll see a dramatic change. Well, when you know, as our schedule uh, lightens up a little bit, what we also have in place is we have already we've checked the flow and against the rain in probably a dozen different manholes. And what we're going to do is go upstream and start videoing these uh, sewer laterals that are tied into the system. And we're going to take that and we're going to go through town like that and check the sewer levels and see if we can find issues um, in levels. We know the sewer mains are tight. We videoed every foot of them. So we know that they're good. So the 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 um, what remains are the manholes and the levels. And so now we're going to start going down. We have we contracted to do the, the manholes and we're going to get back with uh, with our uh, camera that we bought to, to video uh, the Mason Avenue levels. And we're going to start going down through the residential section, section by section, and see where, you know, where we can find issues. So that's the plan. When is the manual contract complete? <clears throat> He's got 180 days from the time he signs the contract, which he hasn't actually signed the contract yet, but he'll be signing it in the next couple of days. So he plans to have that done for the most part um, before summer. This uh, uh, jump on it? Well, it's going to be off of Mason Avenue before some comes. We'll put it in. That's the plan. And be away from Mason Avenue. Uh, I don't think his, uh, the, the, what he's doing is not going to be disruptive. I mean, he'll turn off one manhole, work on it, and then, you know, move on to the next one. So they're in the middle of the intersections. I think pretty much. Um, I can't think of a place where there's a manhole that once they get in there and work, the traffic can't actually go around them. Uh, I don't think it'd be blocking any of the streets you know, to do this. Uh, you've also got a maximum here of 318 gallons per day for the, for the month. Was that due to rain on the wastewater? Um, most likely. The average is 153. Right. And the maximum was 318. So is that? So that can just be heavy usage. Heavy yeah. usage. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, but it could be rain. I mean, it, 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 this, time, this time of year, if it's stopping 175 to 200,000 gallons, if it's stopping that, it probably has something to do with the rain. Do you bypass it? It exceeds plant capacity? I'm sorry. You bypass it when it exceeds the plant capacity? Yeah, we just dump it. Yeah, we just dump it straight to the bed. It, it, it doesn't exceed plant capacity. No. It's plant capacity is 750,000. We've been there. Yeah. Well, not at this point, actually. Yeah, I, I guess I'm thinking that, that, that usage, heavy usage, I, I have a hard time believing we get double the usage uh, in this season. When we're, during the season, yeah, I can see that, but 
So I'm wondering if this is an indication of what the problem is for the difference between the 3.7 million and the 4.7 million. Well, I'll say most likely, yeah, probably so. Um, that shows that, I mean, that, I would imagine that if you looked at, uh, at what was going on with the weather on that particular day or the day before, <coughs> that you'll see that there was some rainfall. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's go on. Uh, anything else, Dave? Did you have to report? I'm sorry. Did you have anything else to report here? Okay. Recreation. I don't really have anything but to add that next weekend is kind of our unofficial start of the season. We've got the lesson of the Friday and the lesson of the world on Sunday. I'm hoping to see all of you there. Round all the things. I have, I have a question. I think in the past you mentioned that we'll be doing the signs at the beach. Yes. <clears throat> um, I had a citizen talk to me about um, driving their golf cart on the boardwalk and being stopped by the police and being asked to get off saying, is it appropriate for golf carts to be on the boardwalk? And so I went down and I took pictures of every single sign yes, on the beach. And the only place there's anything about any motorized vehicle is on that little jump up over where the restrooms are. None of the signs say anything at all about golf carts or about bicycles. So I just would like to make sure that we do a clarification. And if they need to be there, they should be there. And if they don't, that's fine. I'll definitely add that as we're reviewing. And if anybody else has any suggestions, please send them to me because we would really like to get these up before. Um, for more the day, and we're also um, contemplating um, some sort of rack card to put in all the businesses and rental communities, um, all that type of thing. We have basically the same problems every summer, so why not put it on rack card, put it out there for people? Um, golf cart usage is always a big, you know, we see how many times we've seen a 10 year old drive a golf cart. So, to some point, we might have an experienced driver. Um, when dogs could be on the beach, um, different things like that. So if that's other information. If you have any suggestions, please send it to me. <coughs> get that out there and hopefully that will make a difference. But thank you. I, that, that's a very good. Well, I mean, it's such a golf car friendly town. It would be good to be clear about where they can and can't be. And we may know it's clear in the car. Right. Right. And the ball aren't big. It's difficult for them to get into the car. And we may even need to reevaluate some of the skateboard, bicycle, you know,
whereas the Congress and President of the United States have designated May 15 as Peace Officers Memorial Day and the week in which May 15 falls as National Police Week, and whereas the members of the town of Cape Charles Police Department play an essential role in safeguarding the rights of citizens of the, of the town of Cape Charles, and whereas it is important that all citizens know and understand the duties, responsibilities, hazards, and sacrifices of their police department, and that members of the Cape Charles Police Department recognize their duty to serve the people by safeguarding life and property, by protecting them against violence and disorder, and by protecting the innocent against deception and the weak against oppression. And whereas the men and women of the town of Cape Charles Police Department unceasingly provide a vital public service. Now, therefore, the town of Council of Cape Charles calls upon all citizens of the town of Cape Charles and upon all patriotic, civic, and educational organizations to observe the week of May 10th through 16th, 2015, as National Police Week with appropriate ceremonies and observances in which all, the, all our people may join in commemorating law enforcement officers past and present, who by their faithful and loyal devotion to their responsibilities have rendered a dedicated service to their communities, and in so doing, have established for themselves an enviable and enduring reputation for preserving the rights and security of all citizens. In addition, the town of Cape Charles further calls upon all citizens of the town of Cape Charles to observe Friday, May 15, 2015, as Peace Officers Memorial Day in honor of those law enforcement war officers who, through their courageous deeds, have made the ultimate sacrifice in service to their community or have become disabled in the performance of duty. And let us recognize and pay respect to the survivors of our fallen heroes. Adopted by the Town Council of Cape Charles on the 16th day of April, 2015. had many examples in my past term of how the police department has helped out Kate Charles and done some really wonderful things. So thanks very much and tell all you then and Chelsea for a great job. <laughs> Next uh, item on the agenda is building, building Safety Month Proclamation. The International Code Council is the most widely adopted building safety, energy, and fire prevention codes in the nation and are used by most U.S. cities, counties, and states. These modern building codes also include safeguards to protect the public from natural disasters. Building Safety Month is sponsored by the ICC to remind the public about the critical role of our local code officials who assure us of safe, efficient, and livable buildings. The month of May every year is dedicated as Building Safety Month. The proclamation asks citizens to consider projects to improve building safety and sustainability at home and in the community. Staff requests council adoption of Proclamation 2015416B, designating the month of May as Building Safety Month. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion is carried. Let me read the proclamation. Whereas our town's continuing efforts to address the critical issues of safety, energy efficiency, water conservation, and resilience in the built environment that affect our citizens, both in everyday life and in times of natural disaster, give us confidence that our structures are safe and sound and Whereas our confidence is achieved through the devotion of vigilant guardians, building safety and fire prevention officials, architects, engineers, buildings, tradespeople, laborers, and others in the construction industry who work year-round to ensure the safe construction of buildings. <coughs> and whereas these guardians, these guardians, dedicated members of the International Code Council, use a government consensus process that brings together local, state, and federal officials with expertise in the built environment to create and implement the highest quality codes to protect Americans in the buildings where we live, learn, work, worship, and play. 
And whereas the international codes, the most widely adopted building safety, engineer, energy, and fire prevention codes in the nation, are used by most U.S. cities, counties, and states, these modern building codes also include safeguards to protect the public from natural disasters such as hurricanes, snowstorms, tornadoes, wild and wilderness fires, floods, and earthquakes, and whereas Building Safety Month is sponsored by the International Code Council to remind the public about the critical role of the <coughs> community's largely unknown guardians of public safety, our local code officials, who assure us of safe, efficient, and livable buildings, and whereas resilient communities start with building codes, the theme for Building Safety Month 2015 encourages all Americans to raise awareness of the importance of building safe and resilient construction, fire prevention, disaster mitigation, water safety and conservation, energy efficiency, and new technologies in the construction industry. Building Safety Month 2015 encourages appropriate steps everyone can take to assure that the places where we live, learn, work, worship, and play are safe and sustainable and recognizes that countless lives have been saved due to the implementation of safety codes by local <coughs> and state agencies. And whereas each year, in observance of Building Safety Month, Americans are asked to consider projects to build, improve building safety and sustainability at home and in the community, and to acknowledge the essential service provided to all of us by local and state building departments, fire prevention bureaus, and federal agencies in protecting lives and property. Now, therefore, the Town Council of the Town of Cape Charles does hereby proclaim the month of May 2015 as Building Safety Month and encourages our citizens to join with their communities in participation in Building Safety Month activities. Adopted by the Town Council of Cape Charles on the 16th day of April 2015. Yeah, a hurricane comes through and your roof does not blow off your house. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> Jeff. Thank you. you do a lot of hard work and you keep the building safe for us. Thank you. Next item of business. National Public Works Week, the National Works Public, Public Works Week proclamation. Public works infrastructure facilities and services are of vital importance to sustainable communities and to the health, safety, and well-being of the people in the town of Cape Charles, and could not be provided without the hard work and dedication of the Public Works Department. Many times the work done by the Public Works crew is taken for granted by the general public. The American Public Works Association annually sponsors the National Public Works Week to recognize and thank the employees in public works for all they do on a daily basis. Staff requests council adoption of Proclamation 201-504-16C, designating the week of May 17 through 23, 2015, as National Public Works Week, and to thank the town's public works employees for their dedication and helping to keep the town of Cape Charles such a great place to live, work, and visit. I'll read the proclamation. Oh, and a motion. So, so. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion is carried. In honor of National Public Works Week, whereas public works infrastructure, facilities, and services are of vital importance to sustainable communities and to the health, safety, and well-being of the people of the town of Cape Charles, and whereas such facilities and services could not be provided without the dedicated efforts of public works managers and employees, and whereas the town is thankful to all those who plan, design, build, and maintain the public buildings, structures, facilities, and properties essential to our people, and whereas it is critical that the people of the town are educated about participating in the shaping of public works programs in the community, and whereas the year 2015 marks the 55th annual National Public Works Week sponsored by the American Public Works Association. Now therefore, the town of Cape Charles hereby recognizes May 17th through 23rd as National Public Works Week in the town and calls this observance to the attention of all our citizens. 
adopted by the Town Council of Cape Charles on the 16th day of April, 2015. <laughs> Thank you very much. Man. Good job. And if the infrastructure fails, you know, we're all over. <laughs> Thank you. Tell you guys, thank you. citizens and the local governing bodies. Municipal clerks serve as the council's foundation and perform a variety of duties, including meeting preparations and management, maintenance of ordinance and resolution files, keeping the municipality's historical records, and serving as the clearinghouse for information about the local government. Because some elements of government are constantly changing, clerks must stay current of changes in order to advise their council and inform their community. There are many responsibilities of the municipal and deputy clerk that the public takes for granted, such as keeping the council advised of legislation that affects them. The functions of the clerk necessitates a thorough knowledge of law procedure, administration, and interpersonal relations. The International Institute of Municipal Clerks has sponsored Municipal Clerks Week since 1969. In 1984 and 1994, Presidents Ronald Reagan and Bill Clinton, respectively, signed a proclamation officially declaring Municipal Clerks Week the first full week of May and recognizing the essential role municipal clerks play in local government. Staff requests Council adoption of Proclamation 2015416D, designating the week of May 3rd through 9th, 2015, as Municipal Clerks Week. Is there a motion? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, motion is carried. And I'll read the proclamation. Whereas the office of the municipal clerk, a time-honored and vital part of local government, exists throughout the world, and the office of the municipal clerk is the oldest among public servants, and whereas the office of the municipal clerk provides the professional link between the citizens, the local governing bodies, and agencies of government at other levels. And whereas municipal clerks have pledged to be ever mindful of their neutrality and impartiality, rendering equal service to all. And whereas the municipal clerk serves as the information center on functions of local government and community. And whereas municipal clerks continually strive to improve the administration of the affairs of the office of the municipal clerk, through participation in education programs, seminars, workshops, and the annual meetings of their state, region, and international professional organizations. And whereas it is most appropriate that we recognize the accomplishments of the office of the municipal clerk. Now therefore be it proclaimed that the town council of the town of Cape Charles recognizes the week of May 3rd through May 9th, 2015, as Municipal Clerks Week, and further extend our appreciation to our Municipal Clerk Ruby Hume, Deputy Clerk Amanda Hurley, and to all Municipal Clerks for the vital services they perform and their exemplary dedication to the communities they represent. Adopted by the Town Council of Cape Charles on the 16th day of April, 2015. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. You know, I don't think anyone realizes how much Libby, work Libby and Amanda do. You know, I would, I would frankly be lost without you. So, thank you very much. Great, it's a great job, and you know, well deserved. And, and keep up the good work. <laughs> Just tonight, as soon as this meeting is over, she and Amanda are going to go over for class. Which they've been doing for uh, six weeks. Uh, 
Uh, next item of business is uh, credit card charges. We visited this topic not long ago um, about with regard to the harbor. If you take the credit card fees that the harbor was paying on behalf of the people using the credit cards and the town, it would pay uh, public lunch. The, big, the starting salary give you an idea of the scope of the amount of the fees that you pay. Um, right now, our, as an average of 3% for those payments that we take by credit card, over the past 12 months, the um, general fund has paid almost $8,000 in credit card fees for which we've not been reimbursed. The people in town, they frequently say how much they appreciate it because no one else in the area allows them to do that, um, but it's become burdensome. Um, council's already voted to allow the harbor to charge a 3% fee on credit card purchases. Um, today I did find out that Shake and Take was, um, they do, do the same as we do if they let people use it free, you know, without charging them the fees. But I'm not aware of any other municipality or even county that does that. Most of them, or all of them that I was able to research, they use a, a service called official payments. You know, even if you go to Northampton and you use your credit card there, they're actually logging into official payments and taking it there. They don't have their own merchant services accounts and the fees are not coming out of the police budget. The fees, the payment goes directly to the municipality's government and the fees go directly to the vendor. So they're kept separate that way. Um, our citizens also have the ability right now to use official payments if they'd like. They, of course, will pay a fee. And some of them do use it. They can go online and make a payment and you really like if they wish to. Um, but a lot of them really like having a free use that they have for a while. Um, so we are requesting the council elect to allow 3% convenience fee to be applied to those payments made for taxes, utilities, permits, and miscellaneous fees when a credit or debit card is used. And I have at first said May 1st, but I think we need time if you do choose to allow this to uh, let people know the, of the change. So maybe June 1st or July 1st might be better. Um, this will recoup the majority of the fees charged to us that will not be greater than the fees, and that's not allowable by law. Um, the department will also conduct some more research to see, first we have to make sure that we're not collecting above <coughs> the amount charged. But um, we also will look to see if it might be more beneficial to follow the lead of the other municipalities and drop our merchant services account and use official payments or nothing in there. Which would save us a tiny amount of money in terms of the... Uh... It would be less trouble. We wouldn't have to calculate. The fees. We have to pay them for the service. We pay, yeah. sir. We pay quite yeah. a bit for this. It comes out um, automatically out of our account. We don't have to write a separate check for it. So we get an account statement that shows how much they put in our bank account and how much they have. So uh, but do we pay them anything more than the than the three percent? It's sometimes it's a, it's a little more. It depends on the type of card you use. Well, I mean, we only use Mastercard and Visa. Right? We have American Express as well. We started using that last fall, I believe. That's so. a problem. Well, it used to be a problem, but they're <laughs> yeah. It, they contracted with our vendor to. It's it's the same, relatively the same as Visa and Mastercard, the way we're using it for our merchant services provider. But there, it depends on some people have special cards to get special rebates, and I always thought the credit card company was paying those, but it's not. It's the vendor. The the there's a monthly there's a monthly merchant mm -hmm. services fee that we pay, and then there is a, there's a fee that's billed to the to the uh, to us. Take it it's taken out of what we're supposed to get. The chain that's different for different credit card companies. It's a few tenths of a percent usually. The worst of the bunch is American Express. But there's so many layers. It's really hard to tell. There yeah. must be 50 lines of fee, different fees. Dollar here, dollar yep. here. But there are three pages of fees. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, this service exists now. You can use it now. The official payments? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In town. In town. But then whoever uses it the pays fee. the fee to them. And then we pay to have that service. So I, I had heard that originally when we, the town started to allow people to use credit cards and not pay the fee, not use official payments, it, um, it was uh, thought to be the cost of doing business these days. But it, well, it's the cost of doing business for a merchant. Right, but it's well, taxpayer money. Right, we're, we're hopefully not 
making money on this. Oh, no, we're losing money. Right. We're losing money. But we can't make money. That, that was, that's where I was going for. It doesn't sound like you're real clear on how much to charge. It's more than 3% that we're paying right now. It's about 3.2%. Some months it's 3 and then every quarter they add more fees, and in those months it's 37 So we chose 3%. So we're going to go over, and we'll just keep watching it. And see. So we'll still be eating a little bit of it. So, so your, your concern is that we not charge someone more than they're supposed to get? get no, my concern is it's very convenient to do this, and it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great service, and then we're taking that away, and maybe rightfully so. Uh, well, we're, we're not taking it away. No, no, we are taking it away. We're mm -hmm. taking the free service away. We're taking the free service away. They love away. it. They it love it's, it. Really, it's really it's convenient, it's particularly for people that live out of town. I mean, you know, but, you know, it's 50 cents for a stamp or $3 to... For three percent of your bill, so what are you going to do? And to be able to call it paid at the last minute is worthwhile. Yep. Well, and the other thing, and not for this, not for this discussion yet, but down the road, I, I don't know why we wouldn't be able to have regular tenant just transfers from a bank. We will only be able to do that for utility payments, um, and with the system we have now, Edmonds, it's cumbersome and very manual. But the system that I'm, I'm looking at, that's my favorite so far. Um, it's a lot easier, it's a lot more automated, mm -hmm. and we'll be able to set that up. People let us know ahead and sign a contract, say that we're allowed to take by ACH <coughs> that their utility payments. Well, suppose we live out of town and who uh, not here regularly. Could they uh, use the internet and preset a certain amount? Do they have them doing Anyone that? could do bill pay in their own bank. <coughs> So what happens if when you run off a little bit and you kind of notify them that they need to Are you talking about utility payments? Yes. We have some people that just pay a flat amount per month, and when they get their state in the next month, they'll see if they're over or under. <coughs> okay. I'd like to make a motion. That we... is, is it a permission? No, no. We're, we're asking for, for a vote. <coughs> I don't think we're ready. No. no. This is information only. Oh, okay. It's a discussion <laughs> and about the party implementation. It's um, an action online. Yeah, it's an action. So, well, we have a motion. We have a motion on the table. Is there a second for it? And then we'll have What's some the motion? Motion. Please. motion. Three percent. When? July first. I think that. Yeah. July first. Yeah, uh, what's it? Well, well the main process is saying we have a second. That. <coughs> okay, we have a mo mo motion and a second. Please go ahead now. Is there any process fee when somebody comes in and writes a check for a no. tax? No. It doesn't what? cost us anything. When someone comes in with a credit card, then. We're not talking about a credit card. No. But how about a debit card? That's the same thing as a check. Mm, not really. <coughs> when the machine, it takes charges as if it were. Right. Right. If you run a check through the machine, like some places do, take your check like a doctor's office. Right, they treat Process your case. check like that. Do you do that? No, we don't do that. So, debit cards also charge a fee. So, we need to modify this to include debit cards as well. <coughs> So, so I think what we need to do is to have a, 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 a crisp statement of what what, we're, what, what we are moving here. So that implements the three percent that the uh, treasurer is asking for to cover credit card and debit cards. Okay. Starting July first. Mm -hmm. right. Is there any further discussion on this or questions? I wanted to just say we're not make, we wouldn't be making any money on this, and we still wouldn't make quite enough to cover the fees. We want to stay right below so we don't violate the law. But you add it up, that's a public, that's a public works worker. It's, it's a lot of money. All right. A little more than one of those. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Aye. Two of them. Some opposed. You're opposed. I don't like You're opposed. All in favor? How many, how many eyes do we have? Three. Three. Motion you carried. You don't get to vote. <laughs> <laughs> okay.
Next one, uh, application permit fee review, Larry. Good evening. Uh, at the March 24th meeting of the Insurance District Review Board, the board entertained discussion about the current fee structure for receiving a certificate of appropriateness from the First District Review Board. Currently, um, there is a flat fee of $50 for an unlimited number of meetings, consideration, and staff time. Uh, the board looked and asked staff to look into a comparison study. So some larger communities in the Commonwealth were excluded, like Lee's Heard, uh, Charlottesville. Uh, they asked me to look at communities that look more like Cape Charles. Uh, there's a full report that they received that you folks will receive uh, when I bring this to you as part of the uh, budget year considerations in, in, in May. I, the meeting on the 24th, the board decided to look at three tiers of meetings. The initial meeting, which is currently $50, uh, would be raised to $100. Then there would be a modification meeting. If there's changes to these typically plans, from this particular appropriateness stage to the stage where either they go through the permitting or construction is already happening, and that needs to be changed, that modification would require another visit to the board or this will be board to grant another uh, certificate of appropriateness for the modifications. That meeting would be an additional $50. And then the, the cost for a special meeting. And special meeting would be constituted by someone who's going to order the certificate of appropriateness who works outside of the terms of that, of, of that agreement, which is to say somebody who does work that hasn't been approved in the first place. Uh, in addition to the stop work order that the building official would be able to impose on that project to come back and receive another certificate of appropriateness, the board recommends $125. We would also require a special meeting for work done outside of what was previously approved. That's um, what the board came to the conclusion of. Again, this is all part of the general review of uh, planning and building fees, which will have a full report at the May 6th, I believe, question to me. Let's just put a little sting into uh, the bill and big forgiveness. That's the plan. That's the intent. Questions, comments? I think 125 is enough of a sting. That was the board's determination. There were, there were some who you know, sort of desired higher than that. But that's the determination the board came to. Okay. If there are no questions, so. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, and then you need to stay up here because you're going to talk about the planning commission report. Yes, uh, pursuant to the Code of the Commonwealth of Virginia, we've got an annual report that the uh, planning commission is required to present to the governing board uh, relative to planning activities that have gone on in the previous year. So I'm assuming everyone has read this report. Um, you want to just give us a few highlights about it? Um, and again, this is, this is our traditional report. Uh, if it pleases the uh, Council and Planning Commission staff can generate as much information from the previous year as we're interested in now. Uh, but it breaks down uh, significant projects or notable projects high value projects that have gone on in the last calendar year. So this is the calendar year 2014 report as opposed to the fiscal year 2014 report um, of what was some notice, notable uh, projects, including the renovation of the old high school building, uh, the shanty, and the new home construction that was either, uh, either occurred or was at least permitted during the calendar year of 2014. The uh, Planning Commission asked in the revisions, because they received the draft version of this two weeks ago, to include just some comparison of what happened the previous year. So you've got a comparison there of um, uh, business licenses, et cetera, from the previous year. Uh, I could give you as much or as little trend analysis on that as you ask for. Right now, it's only been for one year prior. Um, there's some staff updates as well that, that, that have been typically covered. Uh, who's been elected chair and vice chair of the Plan Commission, Dennis McCoy and Michael Scrub. Uh, there was a change in staff change, staff change when uh, Rob Testament moved on to another similar position in November. Uh, 
that table, again, can be as expansive as you like, but right now we cover home occupation, site plan, reviews, violations, and that's zoning violations, not building violations. The majority of those home zoning violations, by the way, pertain to signage. So that's uh, just something to keep an eye on. There's only clearances that have been off, that are awarded in the last uh, calendar year. Historic district reviews that have happened, the Farmer Area Reviews, Wetland Board, uh, Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, we've had one of those in 2012, and so in 2014, mm -hmm. but resulted in four variances. So hence that explains the asterisk. Uh, and also rezonings and conditional uh, use permits. <coughs> also any changes to the code that have been recommended um, or denied. Or opinion, so you've got that information relative to the floodplain ordinance, the backyard chickens, and the tourism zone. And then just an update on the comp plan because that's the summer of 2013 and 2014 that's been Questions, comments? Yeah, I think uh, the, the level of detail is, is appropriate. I, I would think, I personally would like to see on that chart of a summary chart for permits, maybe a little bit of historical data, just so you can see how it tracks over the years. Two years? Mm -hmm. Two years. I'd like to see three or four. Okay. Yeah, maybe current year and four, so there's a five year. Yep, that's fine. Is that how you do it? Okay. Yeah. Good. Good idea. All right, thank you very thank much. You. Uh, Next item is uh, payment of insurance proceeds. <laughs> this is an action item. Our last item of the evening. And as, you, as was discussed previously, uh, the developer for Cape Charles Lofts uh, is one of the very good partners and uh, is predicting a completion in early June. Uh, he will be in for a certificate of occupancy at that time. The, uh, you'll recall that the contract, one of the contract provisions was to uh, pay the uh, developer or the buyer the property the insurance proceeds from the earthquake damage that we saw. Uh, the, uh, <coughs> that was a little over $41,000. That money was deposited from the general fund in 2012 and uh, will need to be appropriated. Uh, so that the treasurer can take care of this contractual obligation. Uh, so we are recommending appropriation of those insurance proceeds and the amount uh, indicated here and <coughs> an amendment of the 2015 budget so that the uh, check can be uh, cut to the developer time of seal. And uh, as I said, I think Jeff mentioned or somebody mentioned, uh, they will be handing us a check for uh, 50, so, somewhere between fifty-five and sixty thousand dollars for conviction charges at the same time. Questions? Comments? Anything? Make a motion to appropriate funds in the 2015 budget. Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. Uh, and that concludes the new business. We now go into mayor and council. Comments. Do you have any comments to make? I know. Steve? I need to pass it up. I'm just not commenting. <laughs> I have none. All right. Mr. Robert. Jones? Yes, I want to make sure everyone is aware that um, the director is requesting a tweet the announcements. I got it right there, penciled in. But I'll okay. go for it. I'll mention it again. I'm not penciled in on mine. I know that. Okay. I know, I saw it. Okay. I'm sorry, but I know because uh, Debbie was very upset that she was, did not get his proclamation. Blessing of the Worms at 
1.30 at New Roots Garden. Uh, I always try to go to this. I think that this is a, I just love it. I really do. The kids get out there and it's a great time for people. Uh, my office hours uh, will be, my next office hours will be April 28th from 6 to 7 here. On May 7th, we have another town council budget work session at 6. Uh, I have more office hours May 12th from 2 to 3. There's another town council work budget work session at 6 on May 14th. May 16th is the Krabby Blues Festival starting at 3. May 21st is the, the next regular town council meeting at 6. And May 25th, the town offices will be closed for Memorial Day. So I have no further comments. Mayor, okay, I have one thing I'd like to add here. There is going to be a voting safety planks in this building on the 25th, which is the Saturday following the blessing of the fleet. It's free of charge. Anybody, I've got 17 enrolled already, most of them from the town. If anybody wants to take the planks, I can have another 13 in it. They need to contact me. You can call me at home if they want to. Okay. Uh, 678 and I'd be happy to get them enrolled. Is that also? Not, um, I'm voters. sorry, say again? Is that, is that day not also reserved for voters who have old flares? Yeah, they can bring them here and we're going and to be sent off safely. How long is that class? It runs from 8.30 to 4.30. 8.30 to 4.30. That way they still go to the shrimp ball. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There's nothing else. Hopefully, well, adjourn. Thank you. <laughs> you cut me off, right? You ask me to do it. All in favor of adjourning? Uh -huh. uh, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much.